Hey, welcome back to Contract Revolution and episode four of six of our Ultimate Hiring Funnel series. This is your host, Benji. Uh, last week with Asad Zaman, we talked about some of the active recruiting and promotional tactics you can lean on besides just your basic job boards. And at this point in the funnel, you should be starting to receive applicants. And if you followed the best practices shared over the last three episodes, um, you actually should have quite the volume coming at you. So as we said last time, making a good hire is impossible if you have no one good to choose from. So now that you've solved that problem, the question becomes, how do we prioritize and convert our best applicants into interviews? This applicant flow management and interview setup call stage is an unbelievably important step and one that entrepreneurs often don't take seriously enough, leading you to wasting your time on the wrong people or worse worse, being no-showed by your interviewee. Um, to walk us through this, we're lucky enough to have Danny Kerr, Managing Director at Breakthrough Academy, back on the show. Um, before starting Breakthrough Academy, Danny was the head recruiter of all of Western Canada for College Pro Painters. He's the best person we know at this critical flow management and interview setup stage. I hope you enjoy it. You're watching Contractor Evolution where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. You're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability. You've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school, and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Hey, just before we jump into things, I wanted to let you know you can get the free resources that we talk about in this episode in the show description. So hit pause right now, go download them, and they'll be waiting in your inbox by the time we finish this episode. Danny, thanks for doing this, man. Thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Good to see you as always. Uh, I'm excited to hop into like the overall uh, interview setup called process, but I thought before we get into the steps, just talk for a minute about why this stage is so, so, so important. And it's not one you can skip if you want to build the ultimate hiring funnel. Right. Yeah. So it, it'll become a lot more apparent coming up in the next session, but when you do proper interviews, they take quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, um, I've never gotten success out of doing group interviews. I've never gotten success out of doing 20 minute, half hour interviews. My interviews are an hour and a half to two hours long. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's multiples of them over time. And a lot of people think I'm crazy in, the, in saying that. They're like, what are you talking about? How do you even get these people to sit down with you that long? They're just going to go get another job. Right. Well, I think if you follow a lot of what's being talked about in this series, you'll find that the right people are going to stick around. And it's this process itself that's going to probably attract them. And so... If that's the case, for you to go and spend up to two hours with somebody and they're not even the right fit is a huge waste of your time. Totally. So I was always very intentional. I, you know, the, the motto was spend 20 to, to save you know, two hours. Right. Spend 20 minutes to save two hours, essentially. And so usually these calls are about 20 minutes long. And what I'm doing is, well, two things. One, I'm making sure that the people I'm sitting down with obviously are the right people. And two, I'm making sure these people actually show up. Mm -hmm. Right, because and, and I think a lot of you listening probably get this. You set up, you know, three or four people, and maybe one shows up. Yeah, <laughs> and that's 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 a shitty feeling. Let's be honest. You're sitting there in a Starbucks, or you're sitting there at your office, and you've got their resume printed out, and you're all ready for the interview, and you're getting like you're getting no showed like a cheap date. It sucks. Yeah, and it's and it's demoralizing, and it's a big old waste of time. Yeah, right. And so I think in taking this step that we're going to talk about today, it'll really help minimize that. I remember for me, I went from like a thirty to fifty percent show up ratio to like eighty just in doing this. And what was really good is the right people were the ones I was setting up with, right? So uh, one other thing I really found is good applicants are attracted to structure. Yeah. Like they, they want to see and feel that you're doing your due diligence. And if you're not, they're like, what's it gonna be like to work for this person, right? The wrong people do, they, they get a little squirmy with, with too much structure, but you don't want them anyways. So that was another big reason. And the last thing too, I think at the end of the day is Nine out of 10 people that I was interviewing, or sorry, the nine out of 10s that I was actually interviewing in the process. Like the strong candidates. The strong candidates. They yeah. were getting jobs within a week. So you need to pounce. You need to pounce. And, and what was interesting is, is if I don't do a good setup call, they'll just, they'll set up an interview with me, but then they'll no-show me because they already got a job. Right. Versus I have a really good setup call with them 
And they're like, you know what? I had an offer yesterday, but I really wanted to sit down with you first before I made a final call. I've heard that multiple times. Mm -hmm. And it was the setup call that really had them stick around and do that versus mm -hmm. no show me. So mm -hmm. those are some of the reasons. But I think at the end of the day, the biggest thing is it's a huge time saver. Mm -hmm. Although people think, well, that's a lot of extra time. It's a huge time saver mm -hmm. in the whole process. The other thing that's Im really important to remember um, if you've been f listening to this series and, and Danny, I want your thoughts on it too, is like, like um, we're f uh, four episodes in now. We've talked about a lot already. This is actually the first person to person interaction. Yeah. So how important is that first impression? Well, think about it with anything in your life, right? Your first 30 seconds with somebody, you've already judged exactly who they are. And I think, again, a lot of the good applicants are judging you or interviewing you almost just as much as you're interviewing them. And so, you know, if you pick up the phone and you call them and, you're, you know, there's wind in the background or you're super busy or you're disorganized in your thoughts and you're questioning, they're going to read that. And you're still going to have the, <laughs> the B and C list, list candidates not be bothered by that. They're mm -hmm. going to be like, great, someone who wants to interview me, let's go. But the top level candidates are going to be like, yeah, man, sure, I'll, I'll meet with you. And again, they're not going to show up because I'm gonna be like, this guy's a gong show, mm -hmm. right? So we all do it intrinsically already, right? When you think about when you make phone calls to customers or to potential applicants yourself, you can hear it on the phone. The way they pick up, the way they say hello, totally. what's going on in the background, all of that instantly yeah. you're making an opinion about who this person is. You, you and I spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time on the phone or on Zoom calls or whatever. Like you, you can hear focus. Yes, and you can hear a lack of focus yeah. and and you don't even need to spend a lot of the time to to be able to sense that your candidates will pick up on it i think um to just put this from the perspective of someone that's applied to your 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 posting right like they've they've seen something on a job board they've read something on your website they've heard from a friend F you know from whatever source they've come from they are at the very least, interested in learning more about your company and the position that you're offering. Um, they've probably done some research. They might even be getting a little bit excited. This is the first time that they hear a human voice. And so you need to execute at the level that the rest of your funnel has been setting you up for. So if you've done a great job of all the steps we've talked about in previous in previous episodes, and then you, you do this phone call and it's it's like really disorganized haphazard, you do it in a vehicle, whatever, um, that's a huge letdown. So so just just think of that from like the applicant's perspective. What, what are they experiencing when they're on the phone with you? Okay, so Danny, at this point, um, you're getting applicants rolling in from a variety of sources. There's probably some coming from some, from some job boards. Some are being referred to you. Uh, some might be coming through like paid ads that you're running through Instagram or Facebook. Um, you, you, but the point is you are getting an inbox or a couple inboxes that are filling up with resumes, cover letters, whatever you've asked for in the call to action uh, before. How do you keep these really organized? How do you stay on top of the good ones? Because if you've if you've followed the step we the steps we've talked about, you can actually get to a place where you're overwhelmed by how much is coming at you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll say this, and I know this isn't the scenario for most people listening, but you can do a good enough job where you have more resumes coming in than you can handle. And I know that I was in that position for a lot of years. It's a good problem know? to have. It's a good problem to have. And if you follow a lot of what's talked about in here and you're really pumping the time and money for this, you should be in that type of position. Yeah. It might take a couple of years, but when you get to that place, you know, at one point I had a hundred resumes a day coming in. Mm -hmm. Now I was recruiting for all of Western Canada, overseeing a lot of different area, but when that started to happen, I started to realize like there is no way for me to just print out all these resumes, read through them, make a hundred phone calls a day and yeah, actually do happening. anything worth no. any kind of substance, right? So I started to optimize my time. And one of the first things I did was got very clear on like, what is it in these resumes I'm even looking for, mm -hmm. right? Because you can read through a resume and be like, ah, I like their picture. Ah, I kind of like that they work for this company, but that's all subjective thoughts. What's objective is knowing exactly what you're going to be interviewing for. So if you guys had talked about previously the preferences and abilities, yes, I think. we did with Josie okay. Yeah, we so, built these. So if you're doing that, know what how to identify those in the resume, right? So if I'm looking for a project manager, let's say, and I'm looking at somebody who has good amount of leadership, good ability to handle stress, maybe likes to set and hit goals, I need to find 
somewhat like clues or evidence of that mm -hmm. in the resume, mm -hmm. right? So I'll be looking through the resume and I'll be like, okay, like, does this person have any leadership ability? Oh, looks like they were captain of their sports team. Looks like they had a management position at McDonald's. Looks like they had, you know, and so I'm, I'm seeking leadership. There's some stuff there. There's some stuff there, right? Or if I'm looking for like, you know, attainment, it's like, looks like they won an award for this. Looks like they've got, you know, excellent grades or whatever it is. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for potential hypothetical evidence. Mm -hmm. And if I can find two to three traits, or sorry, two to three indicators of each trait that I'm looking for, that's usually a pretty high score. Like mm -hmm. that's someone that's like a nine or an eight out of 10, mm -hmm. out of 10 for me. Um, if I find some really good traits in some things, but can't find any in another, that might be like a six or a seven kind of thing. Yeah. And if I find someone with like one or two traits, but it's really just haphazard and there's not much in here for me, it's like a five or below. Right. Right. So just, just to refresh our listeners, like what, what Danny's talking about are those preferences and abilities like, like uh, attainment, like tenacity, like precision, um, like problem solving, like that stuff that we talked about uh, in our episodes with Josiane, like you, you've gotten clear on this already because you've built an ideal candidate profile. Now what Danny's saying is like, you're scanning the resume for evidence of those traits and whether or not, you know, if they have a few of them, that's, those are the ones that are nines and tens. And if there's like no, no evidence of that, no matter how nicely typed up and formatted the resume is this, this person doesn't have the stuff. They don't have the goods we're after. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they're an excellent applicant. It means that the resume shows indications that they could be totally right. But totally. yeah, it gives me a first semblance of prioritization of who I'm calling and, and at what level. It's some way to score people and, and start to prioritize the people you want to call versus the people you probably won't, totally. won't, uh, won't get time to do that. Um, what kind of, what do you do with the referrals that mm. come in? So like we, uh, in, in previous episodes, we've talked about like creating an incentivized referral program, pumping this through your network. Like, do you do something, is that a different category than someone that just comes like an applicant that comes to you through Indeed or, or some other job board? Yes. <laughs> um, you know, and, and I'm sure most of us are aware of this, like referrals are often the best people that come in, right? When I talk to a lot of people in different businesses, myself included, it's like, where did, where did your best people come from? Oh, it was a referral from so-and-so, right? You know, like, what is it? Like, like birds flock together. I can't remember right. the, the saying, but, um, and it, and it remains very true. And so for a couple of reasons, I put a bit of extra special priority on referrals. So first off, because I do find the quality generally better, like values are already usually aligned. They're a similar minded person to the employee that maybe referred them to me. But secondly, and almost more importantly, the person who's taken the time, say my staff members referred me their cousin. Mm -hmm. And if I don't call that guy back, my staff member's gonna be pissed. Totally. Right? He's just like, dude, I took the time. I had a half hour conversation with him. He was super excited to hear from you. What the hell? Right? And now it looks bad on me. My staff member's upset. The other guy's, you know, certainly not interested. And I've damaged a relationship. Yeah, and, and, and like the chances of this staff member referring you someone again in the future when you need Slim another role, they'll be like dude, screw off. I referred you my cousin and you didn't even call him. Forget yeah. it. What's the point? And even if they do refer you, they're not going to put the same amount of effort and energy in next time because they'd be like, well, they might even call. Not, they might not even call you, man. So don't worry about it. Right. So I've been very intentional. And that's a lesson I've learned, I would say, from like, you know, the school of hard knocks. Right. But um, I've been very intentional now to make sure that every single time a referral is sent to us that we call them. Yeah. And at least have a conversation with them. Even totally. if we're like, this doesn't look like a fit call them out of respect for the relationship to maintain the to relationship. maintain the relationship yeah i got it yeah and sometimes you have some interesting surprises you're like this is actually a really good person and on the second half of that i mean by doing that i also want to make sure that the person who referred them knows what's going on so let's say i make that call and i'm like this isn't right the right fit which is okay i'll still let the staff member know hey i had a conversation with them probably not the right fit for this one but thank you so much for referring them yeah right and encourage that type of behavior for the future um in a in a in an episode previous with Assad, we, we talked about creating a culture of recruitment with within the business. Uh, like like th there's a there's a recruiting mindset that all your your entire leadership team adopts. <laughs> Not doing that is a very good way to kill that that culture. So so I think I think the the special priority given to referrals is a, a really important point. Now, when you're talking about this this time when you're getting like a hundred resumes a day, right? What kind of folder system did you use? There's got to be something you use to organize um, your A's from your B's from your C's. Like, how did that look and, and how did you keep everything um, organized and, and fresh? 
Yeah, you, you realize a couple of things pretty quickly. I mean, one is you can kill a lot of trees and go through a lot of ink cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's expensive. It's expensive. So I started to resort out of necessity to not printing out anything. And what I would do is somebody would email me a resume or whatever it is. I would save the file. So say it's a Word file. And I would change the name of what's ever in there. So I'd actually start it with the rating out of 10. So it'd be rating out of 10, their name, the position they're applying for, and then any notes I might have had around like left message, sent email, just around communication. You're actually like renaming I the actually name renaming of the, of the, the file. file. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then I'll grab that file and I'll save it into my Dropbox folder where my, sometimes if you have a recruiting team, I had a bit of a team helping me, they can actually see the flow that's going on. And I had three different folders. I had one for apps rejected, apps to call, and apps converted. Mm -hmm. And so that allowed me to know kind of where to prioritize my flow and also what rating in each section people were actually at. Because if you think about it, in, in your Dropbox folder, you can go, you know, sort by name. And now all your 10s out of 10s all batch up at the top, 9s, 8s below, 7s. And now I've got a nice sortation and order of my top applicants and in the right area of where they're at in the sale or in the interview stage. Yeah. So. Without that, you're kind of looking at this resume going like, oh, John Smith, wait. Did I call this guy already? Like, is have I have I talked to him? I can't even yeah. remember. So, like, having the, I think you said apps to call, apps rejected, and apps set up yeah. folders is a really critical step. Okay, sure. so, um, you've pre-screened. What what other thing I'll say to this? Okay. So, when you do that, here's a byproduct of 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 work that now is there for you forever. You have an ongoing list of resumes yeah. sorted by nine out of ten. You know, sorted out of ten that you can come back to should you ever have a position that's open in a similar role. You've, you've kept an inventory. You've kept an inventory. And just like you would do with lead gen where you can nurture leads over time, you can always go back to that inventory and, and reach out to them saying, hey, I know six months ago you applied, you were busy, or we weren't able, you know, we didn't take you in. You know, if you want to relook at this, here's a new ad out. And you can start to re-communicate with all the people from that flow. And you can keep that flow for years. And that can just keep piling up over time where you've got a list of potential applicants that already applied for this position, although it may be a year ago or so, where new, you know, new situations in their life may arise sure. and suddenly they become applicable. They went off and got a job and six months later, it turns out they don't really like it and, and it's the perfect time. You just, you just never know. You never know. Yeah. Okay, so you've you've pre-screened, you've prioritized, you've got a little you got a little bit of a, a system to, to keep your, fo uh, your folders clean and organized. Um, how do you prepare for a setup call? Yeah. So this is really important. And I think a lot of people do rush this step more than they should, right? So I make sure actually that I have two separate, say one or two hour blocks of time in my week for this. So I'm not just randomly being like, I've got some time, I'll do it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it on Thursday or so I'm going to do it on Tuesday and Thursdays. Like That's it's fully I, block scheduled at fully the beginning block scheduled. of the week. You're not just like, you're not just like filling, you're not just doing this in filler space when you have a minute. Like it's like right there Tuesday afternoon from three till five, I'm doing this. Totally. And if it was only on Tuesdays, then all the resumes I got between that Tuesday and the next Tuesday would have to wait to be called. Too slow. Too slow. My top people are going to get jobs by then. Yeah. Right. So Tuesday and Thursday, I've got all the people that came in over the weekend and Monday are called on Tuesday. You know, all the people that came in Wednesday and Thursday morning, I'm calling on Thursday. The people you didn't reach on Tuesday, have, you get another chance to call them on Thursday. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm able to have a nice flow to who I'm following up with. So first off, just block scheduling time so you can keep on the right people mm -hmm. and a good cadence. You're, tre you're actually treating this the exact same way you would fresh leads that you pay totally. a ton for. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so I've got block scheduled time to do it. I'm, I'm focused. So I'm like usually in my office, no noise, no distractions, no like other things I'm trying to do while multitasking. Like this is the task at hand. I've printed out the resume at this point and I've printed out this thing. Oh, you got another sheet here. It's called an interview setup call sheet. And this actually helps kind of just like structure my conversation. And so I've sat down, I've looked through the resume, I've get, you know, this person has two things of leadership, one thing of attainment, you know, a couple things of, you know, ability to handle stress. And now I'm going to make a phone call with a bit of a, call it a script, but a bit of a guide to kind of help make sure that conversation goes extremely well. Okay. So quiet, distraction-free environment. You're not in a vehicle. You don't have a bunch of background noise going on. Um, you have you have the resume printed. You have the they have the setup call tool printed. By the way, we're going to go through this for a couple minutes here. If you're listening to this and you want to download one of these, this will be in the description. There'll be a link that you can click. You can download this for free. Just just have it. This will make your next interview setup call a lot easier and way more structured. 
Um, and then the the uh, you have you have these pre booked interview slots as well. Did you mention that? Uh, no. Okay, so so what do you mean by pre pre booked interview slots? So simple or similar to my discovery call spots, I'll have probably two days a week on the week coming up where I've already booked half a day to potentially put somebody into those spots. Again, that way I'm not just doing disjointed interviews in between running production or doing estimates. It's like from 12 till five on whatever, Wednesdays and Fridays, I'm doing my interviews, mm -hmm. right? And so now when I'm setting people up, it's usually within a week, right? I can sit down with them pretty quickly. And the other thing is I find that if I have a really good interview with somebody, sometimes the first interview is not enough and I need to do a second or sometimes even a third interview. So if I'm setting somebody up and meeting them on a Wednesday, I'm not like, this is great. Let's meet again next Wednesday. It's like, let's meet on Friday, right? So we're, we're, we're keeping tight to our flow. And the reason I don't like to do it the very next day is I find they don't have enough time for their selves to make decisions and kind of like do their research and get kind of ready for yeah. an offer. Yeah. I give them that extra day to go do that. And then we have an interview the next day. It's, it's, it's the right amount of space, I find. A little bit of like hopscotching between days. And remember to everyone, like your goal here is if you if you connect with someone on the phone, they're good, they're a nine out of ten, or nine or a 10 out of 10, you want to do an interview with them. You can't be like, hey, you know what? I really like you. Um, I'm gonna have a look at my calendar. Let me get back to you and let, I'll, 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 I'll let you know when I'm available. You want to move them straight into a into a meeting from that phone call. You don't want to get off. You don't want to get off the line without doing that. And it's and if you have these pre-booked slots in your calendar, it's way 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 easier. You know, it's Saturday or it's Monday or it's whenever it's happening. You just move them straight into it. Yeah, like the reason we're creating this level of kind of like flow urgency is something I, I discovered a long time ago, which was I can call through all these people if I want, but my nines and tens out of tens are usually getting a job within a week. They'll be scooped up. They'll scoop. They'll be yeah. scooped up. You got to be my, ready to move. My sevens and eights within a week or two or three. And my sixes and belows are usually, they're always, they're the ones that are reapplying to me every three months. <laughs> they're always looking for a job. <laughs> and so if you're lackadaisical in your process and you're just meeting people with, you know, whenever you can and you barely got time and you'll be like, man, there's no good people out there. It's because the only good ones you maybe did have got scooped up before you even probably had a good conversation with them. Okay. So you've prepped, you're now, you're now punching in their phone number in your phone. Take us through the, the process of the call from there. Sure. Yeah. So this guides me quite a bit. It's just a step-by-step -step process, but it kind of makes sure that I have a focused conversation with them. So first thing, step one, intro and check-in, right? Which basically just means to me, how do I bring this person to a human level? You know, like I want to talk to this person kind of like I would talk to my family member or a friend or somebody I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And if they're, you know, like, yes, sir, no, sir, like really uptight or they're, you know, distracted or whatever it is, I need to capture their attention in a way where we can have a real just human conversation and I can get to know them, right? The intention is not to get to know the interview version of them. I want to know them. So mm -hmm. I've got to spend some time just getting to know, yeah. right? How they've been, what's been going on, what's been going on today, where they come from, like just report topics. Typical report like stuff that you would do with a client or or like anyone you don't know super, super well. Just break the ice a little. Yeah, and be willing to just be you too. Like just be human. Yeah. Right. This is what I was up to. This is what you know, you know, funny thing that happened to me today, whatever it is, and help them be like, oh, this person doesn't have a stick up their ass, right? Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. person's just a human being like I am. And so that's my interview style anyways, but I've always found that's really helped people just to kind of be comfortable for the next set of questions that I had for them. Get them to take the mask off. Yeah. Okay, what next? Okay, so next, once you've kind of gotten to like pretty just human level with that individual, um, probably the next big thing is I want to understand the current situation of where they're at, right? So I'll usually build up to that a little bit and kind of go through the resume and kind of like, okay, I see you worked here for five years. Tell me how that went. What did you learn from that? Okay, then I see you moved over here. Why did you do that? And what, what led to that you know, happening? You know, and then, okay, and now I see like we're here. Yeah. What, what led to you communicating with me today? Mm -hmm. You know, what is it you're actually looking for? You know, and I want to understand like, is this person like not had a job for six months? Totally. Are right? you employed right now? Are you <laughs> sitting in your mom's basement just applying to stuff randomly so you can get EI? Like you, you, you want to get a feel for totally. what, what they've been up to lately. Totally. Or like, or like sometimes arguably even worse, do you have a job and you're just like pissed at your boss and you want to like stick it to the yeah. man and you're like vying for a raise with him or I, I've seen and heard all kinds of crazy situations, but it's, it's really good to take time to like understand what that current situation truly is. Right, because people will be pretty vague at first. They'll be like, "I don't know, it's just time for a change." 
right? Yeah. No, like, no, like what, like why? Yeah. <laughs> right. So I did, I usually dig into that one a little bit deeper and I try and understand like, what are they looking for? What's important to them? You know, do they have nefarious intentions or are they someone who's just a little bit more like, Hey, like I saw what you guys are offering. It inspired the hell out of me. And it's who I want to become or it's what I want to learn or it's where I'm trying to go in my career, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to see like, is this a logical path for this human or is this they're here out of desperation or anger, right? Mm -hmm. What what led them to being here with me today? So really like these these first couple sections of the of the call and and um, just to listeners, like like when you download this this tool, it will it's very, very clear. It's literally just like an, ins an instruction manual with, with space for notes. Um, so, the, but the the first two steps are, are really just you like leveling with them, getting real with them, getting to know with them. You're not you're not interviewing. You're not like you're not grilling them. You're just you're just being real and, and understanding where they're at. Okay, so next are these candidate questions, Danny. Take us through those. Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, partially I'm getting to know them better and and you know making a bit of a judgment call on how they would fit. Mm -hmm. But I would say eighty percent of this is actually trying to just understand their needs, right? So. What brought you to, you know, what brought you to applying today? What's important to you? What are you looking for in your future? Like, what do you want ultimately? Why is that so important? Because I know some, some listeners would be going like, why, why do I, it's, it, this is about what I want. This is about what I'm <laughs> looking for in an employer. Why is it, why is it so important for you to understand what they are looking for? You know, I, I think I said this in another podcast, but we, we're in a new economy right now, right? 2008 was the recession of dollars. We are currently in the recession of people. And that is the finite resource. Yeah. And people have options. Good people, I should say, have options. And if you're not attuned to that and you don't understand that this is also a bit of a sales process, you probably are going to lose out on your best people. Yeah, right? Asad talked about that a lot on, on the last episode. This is, this is a candidate-driven market and you need to understand their needs, their wants, so that you can sell. You can talk about the role. You can talk about the business. You can talk about your team, your culture, the career path you put them on. You can speak to that in a really captivating way that makes them go, holy crap, they, like... These people sound cool. And let me say this, because I do think a lot of people do that, but I think they do it almost right away. They're like, hey, how are you doing? Okay, cool. This is you. Okay, great. Let me tell you all about us. Da, 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 yeah, and they yeah, just yeah. start like product up puking up. Yeah. all over the place when it's just like, let me understand you both so you can feel heard and I understand your needs. But now when I do go to describe the company or the position, it's in light of the things that actually matter to you. Totally. Right? So there might be 70 things that I'm proud of but I can tell there's three things that are super important to you. Let me make sure when I talk about the company and the, and the, the position that I just talk about those three things. So the candidate questions are, are actually really, and if you read them, actually just let me see this, Danny. It's, it's what type of company are you looking to work with? What type of role are you looking for? Uh, what are you good at? What are you not good at? What are you, what are you interested in learning more about? Like it's very, these are very like, what do you, Mr. or Mrs. Candidate, need what do you want so you're actually this isn't you're not asking these questions to interview them so much you're asking them to assess their needs so that when you talk about your business you can do that in an effective way that that really sells totally okay yeah. okay so next Danny, is this job overview step take us through that yeah so i usually give them what's called like a helicopter tour like an overview of the company itself if you're flying over the yeah whole flying thing, over the thing and so it's the company itself and the job itself, right? Okay. And, I, and I do my best to give them it in the context of my experience, but only talk about the things that are important to them, Yeah. if that kind of makes sense. So I'm not trying to go off on some random tangent about all the things I care about, but I do tell them the story about the company from the, the eyes of me. Mm -hmm. And the things I bring up are the things that are important to them. Mm -hmm. And it kind of helps them see it from like, like yeah, like... I'm totally like you. Like I, I, I care. Like that's exactly what I would think too. And it helps them relate and it helps them feel, you know, basically understood. And they're just like, this is the kind of position that I would love to be in because I could see myself in exactly what you, you went through in your own career. So yeah. So I give them a job over you, but in light of their needs, you're selling, I'm yeah, selling you're, and, you're and I'm doing it in a way that they can visually understand it. And in the way that I'm probably most passionate about it, which is my own experience. Yeah. So if, if in the candidate questions, you know, it, it came up that, Hey, you know what? I'm just so like, I've been working at the, like this cubicle job. I really, really hate it. I like what I loved about this position or like the, the, the job posting that you had is it looked like I could work with my hands. I could be outside, be in a really cool environment in a team atmosphere. 
when you do the job overview tour, let's yeah. say your landscaping yeah, so business, I'm just like, you would I'm, talk about that explicitly. Yeah, so, so I was like, you know what? Like, <laughs> I remember I used to work at Walmart years ago. Yeah. And one of the major things that even got me to start this company was to be able to be outdoors more for myself. It, you know, getting out there in the summertime, awesome tan. I will say winters was kind of another story for me, but having a good time being able to be outdoors and really, you know, just like live a life that's free of like being under a, like a constant neon light yeah. made a huge difference for me. Right. But I, I'll speak to whatever it is in light of my own experience. Okay. So that's, yeah. that's the job overview. You're, you're, you're talking about it and you're, you're trying to make it sound cool. Then you get to these deal breakers. What are the deal breakers and, and why do you want to get them out of the way early? Yeah. So these are things like, you know, can you get yourself to the location? You know, are you willing to take a drug screening test? Do you have the required, you know, cert safety certifications? Like yeah. whatever it is, I need to ask those because sometimes you're like, and I'm sure people have done this before that when you interview people, but you're like, great, you know, welcome to the team. All right. So all you need to do is get yourself to this job site location tomorrow. And they're like, how? You're like, oh, you don't have a license? Yeah. You're like, no. It's like, man, we just spent hours and days together. I forgot to ask those things. So I usually ask them early on in the discovery call and it's just get them out of the way. And I hired sure. a painter that was scared of heights once. Yeah. And like on day one, I sent him up a ladder and he had a panic attack. Totally. Yeah. It was like, why, like, I, why didn't I do this on the first phone call? I'm such an idiot. He'd, he'd been through like a full orientation. He'd, I bought a bunch of gear for him. Like it just was like, Totally. So dumb. So, th so those deal breakers are like the obvious things to get out of the way. Just the simple logistical things that you could obviously miss on in an interview. Get them out before you even set up the interview. Okay. So how do you close one of these calls? So here, this is actually one of the, I would say after all of this, once you've decided that, yes, this is somebody I want to sit down with, one of the most important things is the close. Mm -hmm. Because if it's just a quick, like, awesome, I'm, I'm doing interviews at Starbucks next week. Do you want to meet me there? Okay. See you then. Five o'clock. Sounds good. Bye. Chances are they're not coming. For a lot of reasons, but I, I take my time to go through logistics, set up good expectations, and make sure they're kind of excited to meet with me. G give us an example. So, yo, know, do you want me to role play with you? Yeah, let's do okay, it. Okay, okay. So, Benji, awesome chatting with you today. Um, I got a lot out of our conversation, and based on kind of what we've gone through so far, I think it's a probably worth both of our time to kind of explore this a little further. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I'd like that. Cool. Okay. So um, my interview process is somewhat extensive. I want to make sure when we go through this that we have the right amount of time to kind of make sure that you are the right fit. And for your own you know, sake, I, I don't want you to get into a job that's not good for you. And I don't clearly don't want to hire somebody that's not good either. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a bit of time to do this properly. And there's a couple of things I need you to do as well leading up to the interview itself. Fair enough? Yep. Okay. Um, could you grab a pen? There's just a few things I want you sure. to write down. Okay, cool. So um, I've got time on Tuesday and Thursday next week, um, 12, whatever, two, three, and five. Mm -hmm. What time works best for you? Uh, Tuesday at 12. Okay. So just make sure you write that down. Um, I'm going to be at the Starbucks at XYZ location. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be about a two hour interview. We might finish a little bit early, but just make sure you're blocked off for that amount of time. Does that still work okay, for you? Yeah, no problem. Okay. That's good. Um, now, I'm going to be basically those two days back to back in interviews. So it's quite important that you're able to make it, that you're on time, that you come prepared. Um, if anything comes up, um, let me just give you my cell number just so that you have it. I'd much rather know ahead of time so I can rebook somebody else in okay. and not have you show up at all. So is that fair? Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. So my number is XYZ, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Last thing, um, I find, you know, it's going to be important for me to learn a lot about you mm -hmm. through this interview, but I want you equally to know as much about us. I think it's just having a good open dialogue is going to make this really work and it'll help you make sure this is the right fit for you too. So to help with that, um, I don't know if you've been yet or not, but go to our website, yep. www.whatever. Yep. And I would love you just to read through, you know, the about us section, to just g generally browse through it to, at your leisure. But what I would really love is for you to come with about five to 10 questions of things that you would like to know I can more do that. about. You can sure. do that? Okay, cool. So yeah, and we'll open up when we start our, our chat next time with those questions. So that sound good? Sounds really good. I can't wait. Awesome. So like I said, uh, you've got the time, location, everything's written down. Awesome. Um, I look forward to meeting you there. Any other questions that you have? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Great. So talk to you then. And uh, that is a bit. That's See you then. Kind of close it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's... I try to add a lot of structure. I try to make sure they're organized. I try and give them a little bit of direction. Mm -hmm. The other thing I always do in between meetings is I give them a little bit of prep to do. It keeps their mind engaged, 
right? So it's like, right, yeah, I got to look at that website. It gives them some, some homework to do, keeps the excitement up for them, keeps them thinking about me and not just like a quick like, oh yeah, shit, I forgot about that interview. It's yeah. like we've given them something to do and that leads into that interview itself. But I think the thing, you know what I noticed in that, that little role play we did is like um, there's a tone of excitement to your voice and you're very, very clear about the instructions. You're not vague. You're not like we'll meet Saturday around this time. Yeah. At this place, you're like, write it down. It starts right at this time. Be prepared. Be a little bit early. It's a vi- you're, you're giving clear direction um, as far as what you want them to do. Yeah, I, I call it being lovingly assertive. Right. Right. So it's like, look, like I'm clearly encouraging. I'm excited to meet with you. I see opportunity in, in West working together, but I also have some ground rules to make sure that this goes well. Yeah. And I think the right people are drawn to that type of mentality. How long should all this take? You've kind of, we've gone through the framework. We've really expanded on some of the points, but when you're actually doing this live, what's like, um, how long is this phone call? You know what? 20 minutes is a good timeline and giving yourself a full half hour if need be is not unheard of. Okay. So 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah. What's the tone and the energy from the candidate? Like, can you notice something about their voice? Um, how, how excited they seem like what, what should you be able to notice about the candidate if you've done a good job at this point? Uh, it, they should feel respectful of you. They should be like, man, I'm like, I'm glad I, take I got this to, seriously. Yeah. I take this seriously mm-hmm. and they should feel encouraged. Okay. I think those are two really good words. And so it's like, you know, there's a bit of authority and there's a bit of an, a chance where you're leading the way and they understand that and they feel encouraged. They feel like this person has my best interests in mind and this person actually genuinely cares about this going well or not well like they, they they're not just trying to force me into a role which is which as you get into the interviewing process you'll see it but it's very much about understanding is this a fit or not and being able to maintain that control and ultimately you guys might get into this i'm not sure but my interviews themselves were the things that sold the candidate into wanting the job it was the thoroughness and the prep and the understanding and the feedback even sometimes i would give to people totally. that had them be like you know your shit totally right Amazing. So let's do a quick recap of everything we've, we've covered today. Um, you know, this is the f- this is episode four of a six part series. I won't recap all the episodes that came before this, but today what we covered is, um, you know, why this why this stage is so important. You need to optimize uh, and, and be efficient with your time because you're going to invest in all these applicants. Uh, the nines and the tens out of ten, they're going to go get scooped up by someone else. So you need to be ready to pounce. Um, This first impressions matter thing is really important. Like this is the first human to human interaction that this applicant is having with your company. So that's, that's why this stage is not one that you can skip or take lightly. Then we talked about how to prioritize based on scanning resumes, how to organize using a folder system. We talked about how to prep for a setup call. So like quiet, distraction free environment, print out your stuff in advance, mark stuff down on the, on the printed resume that you have in front of you. Then we talked about the process of an actual interview you set up call. So doing an intro and check in, um, getting to know their current work and life situation, those candidate questions that are really important, doing the job overview, running through the deal breakers and the next steps and that excited close where you give them really clear direction on where you want them to go at what time next. So guys, that's, that's the, um, that's how to do an interview setup call. Danny, I want to thank you for doing this with us today. It's been a ton of fun. Yeah, no worries. And I want to mention next week we have on the show James Alish, who's going to talk about the top to bottom interview process, how to prep for one, how to probe with, with, with good questions, how to score people and how to make final decisions. So that's coming up on episode five of the Ultimate Hiring Funnel series. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Contractor Evolution. If you've already subscribed to our channel, consider sharing this episode with another contractor who you think needs to hear it.